they've been very decisive in the key transitional moments. The, the, the reflection of how they've actually benefited yeah. from these key transitional moments was how things turned when they played against South Africa. And you actually referenced that, that South Africa played the better football on the day, but didn't win the game. Look, Nigeria were South Africa in disguise in that game, yeah. not performance-wise, but key transitional moments-wise. You get an opportunity to get a second goal through Seaman. It is ruled out. VR interrupts. You go and check, and then there is a penalty call wow. at the other side. That's what Nigeria has been with. I should mention Jelson Dalla and how they brought on another striker. He was in the Nigeria jersey. He had an opportunity to actually aim for goal with a curl. I was watching that game with Opoku and he said, look, yeah. you don't attack that ball that way. He actually managed to find an upright instead of the goal. So in the key transitional moments, things fell in place for Nigeria. Yeah. But they have not been a dominant performer. Like say, we saw in the opening game between Senegal and Gambia, where you see Senegal laying down the marker, yeah. that I'm dominating you, I'm dictating the tempo, I'm carrying the fight to you, and I'm coming to beat you. Now, Nigeria didn't do that. But in those key transitional moments, they prevailed. But in this very game, the perpetrators of the key transitional moments had to defend for their lives. One of them was Olaina. This was a game where the game had been taken to him. So he couldn't just be... And he really struggled. Um, he, you can't even come like you've been doing all the time. Yeah. He comes in, becomes an auxiliary winger, and you find either Moses or whoever is on his flank tucking in to join the attack, to create weight for him, to operate with. And they were a bit negative because they knew exactly how they had come this far. Yeah. Solid defense, not conceding much, and picking off on the key transitional moments. Yeah. But it was not going to happen with La Côte d'Ivoire because one, they are playing with emotion. And since that game against Senegal, when they put in that through ball, that was meant for Christian Kwame instead. He actually evaded the pass. And then Pepe was coming in from somewhere and then won a penalty off Mendy. Yeah. That's when their tournament changed. The turning point. That was their turning point. And right after that penalty incident, you could see that they come at you with some bit of emotion. Yeah. And coaches usually say this. Look, players tend to go in for tackles that hitherto they wouldn't have gone in for when they have the emotion and adrenaline playing them on. True. And that's exactly what La Côte d'Ivoire did. Look, one thing that actually hindered them in the early stages of the competition was the absence of Ale and Adingra. They did. They provide them a unique option that they wouldn't get. A towering presence up front, who is not just good with his head, but also with his feet, and has a lot of supreme positional awareness, and then an outlet on the wing, who wouldn't do what Pepe does? Yeah. He's that direct, yeah. pacey, very direct. and very skillful. So you look at Crasso. Yeah. And then you look at Edinga. Even the Akite. Two yeah. different. Even the Akite. And, and look, this guy has end product. The, 